So, now that we got all the moves in Spiral Mountain, we can move on to Gruntilda's Lair, which is the hub world in this game. Uh, that bridge that you see there, it's out of order unless you press B in the beginning to get all the moves right off the bat, or if you press A, you have to talk to all the mole hills uh, in Spiral Mountain. So... Uh, I guess so there's nothing left for us to do here. We're going to be coming back here later because there's an interesting side quest we can do. But otherwise, we're not coming back. So, now we cut to Gruntilda and Tuti who are about to get ready for the transformation. But in true video game villain fashion, Gruntilda doesn't really want to win as she will only go ahead with the transformation if I get a game over or uh, if I use the save and quit option, which I will cover at a later time. Um, so, yeah, I'm tired of being an ugly wish. Then why don't you start the transformation now? I still have several hours before I get to the top of the tower. What are you thinking? Anyway, let's get started on Gruntilda's Lair, and right off the bat, we get a, a fan-favorite quirk in this game. That is, Gruntilda will taunt you every now and then when you're in her lair. Now, this thing is called a Jiggy. It's the equivalent of stars in Mario 64. Uh, they are used to unlock new worlds, but the difference with Mario 64 is that they are actually consumed in the process of entering new worlds. So this one Jiggy here is all we need to enter the first world, fortunately, which is right over there. As you can see here, there is a puzzle, and um, you gotta... Whoops, sorry about that, I think I just skipped a line of dialogue here. But uh, yeah, there's only one piece missing, so fortunately we have one Jiggy which is going to be used for filling uh, the, uh, the puzzle. So, uh, what you want to do now, uh, if you if you want to use the puzzle piece, you're gonna you're gonna use uh, you're gonna press A. You, you can press B to back off, and later on, once uh, you're gonna encounter puzzles that need more pieces, you can press Z in order to uh, fill the puzzle in uh, one in, in the press of a single button. Anyway, the first world, Mumbo's Mountain, has been unlocked. So how about we head over there and see what's in there? Um, this area is sort of a tutorial level as well, as it uh, will help you familiarize yourself with uh, a, a lot more core concepts of the game. For example, this little guy here is called a Jinjo. And there are five Jinjos in each world, and if you can collect them all without dying or leaving the world, you are going to get a Jiggy for your troubles. Note that there is a difference in the Xbox Live Arcade version, where once you pick up a Jinjo, you keep it permanently, so you can die as much as you want, leave and come back as much as you want, and you will still keep those uh, Jinjos. Now, uh, this place here, as you can see, there are those little huts and... Uh, Hello! I didn't even learn the ground pound yet. Fortunately, it's right over there. Notes, I will explain uh, how they work a little bit more in detail once I get the time, because it, it can be a bit complicated if you're not familiar with the game. Anyway, the ground pound, uh, which is called the Beak Buster in this game, is um, done the, the, in the exact same way as in Mario 64. You just jump in the air, then press Z to ground pound. And uh, we're, we have some huts, as I was saying earlier on, to practice on. This one's got some uh, notes inside. You want to you want to ground pound all of those huts to make sure that you don't miss anything. And uh, this thing here, sticky, tasty honey energy. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, honeycomb piece, uh, which uh, restores your health. It's not like uh, those we saw in Spiral Mountain, where uh, they actually they, they could actually increase your max health. Those things actually heal you. Anyway, there there was a monster in there. Let's see what's in this one. There's one where there is uh, yeah Jinjo and. Uh, think, oh, there are two left, there's one with a uh, Jiggy inside, oh, we got an extra life, not complaining, not complaining, extra lives are always good, and here we go, we got uh, our first uh, Jiggy in an actual world, there are ten Jiggies per world, and ten more in Gruntilda's lair, 
So, and uh, now that this is done, there is another... Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Bottles is telling us that uh, uh, we can leave this world by... Uh, by standing on the exit pad, which is the very spot where we were when we entered this level. Now, uh, in this skull building thing, uh, there is another jiggy in the eye. There we go. And then, um, down there, near the entrance, there's another important type of item called a mumbo token. What it does... Well, how about we just go check it out? Uh, so this place is uh, Mumbo Jumbo's skull. This guy here is Mumbo Jumbo. He's a, a shaman that uh, got his skin ripped off by Gruntilda. Yeah, it's sort of gruesome, which is why he looks so gross. But uh, anyway, as he's saying, he can help us, but only for a price. For example, uh, he can transform us in a, into a termite in this world, but it costs five Mumbo tokens, and we only have two. There are five in this world, so that's just enough for the transformation. Uh, let's see what's up there. Oh, we got some eggs. Eggs are uh, used as ammunition for ranged attacks, so you want to grab them as much as you can. You can carry a max of 100 at this point in the game, though you can upgrade it to 200 later on. And then, um, yeah, Mumbo Tokens, they are found in every world, but Mumbo himself is not, so even if there's no Mumbo nearby, you're still going to want to collect as much of these things as you can. There are 115 in the entire game, but you only need 75 to uh, buy all the transformations. But this is a 100% run, so I will be getting them all. Now, um, Bottles is going to teach us the Talon Truck, which is the move that I was alluding to earlier. Uh, this is going to allow Kazooie to uh, run on her own by carrying Banjo on her back. So, little roll reversal here. And uh, Kazooie runs around much faster than Banjo. Just look at that. A lot faster. And... Um, yeah, you can also walk on much steeper slopes than uh, what Banjo could do, so it's uh, gonna come in very handy. It's probably the move that I will be using the most in this entire playthrough, just to give you an idea of how useful it is. So, uh, notes. Now I think I have enough time to talk about notes. They're sort of like coins in Mario 64, but they don't serve the same purpose. There are 100 notes in each world, and just like Jinjo's, you don't keep them permanently. That is, uh, that the game is going to remember your high score in terms of notes for each world. Your high score being defined by the amount of notes that you grab at one time without dying or, um leaving the world. So, for example, I have 45 notes. If I die now, I'm going to fall back to zero, but I'm but my high score is going to uh, be 45, and the total of your high scores counts towards the actual number of notes that you are considered to possess. So, there are 100 notes for each world, which means that there are 900 notes in the entire game. You get nothing for getting more than uh, 882 because the highest note door, something that we're going to encounter in Gruntilda's Lair later on, is it requires 882 notes. Now, this guy standing on top of the tree, his name is Konga, and what you want to do, you see those panels, you want to stand on them so that you can lure Konga into um, throwing oranges on these panels, and once you get all three, you get a Jiggy. So, how many do I have for this world already? Four, okay. Now, you want to climb on this tree, grab an orange, and there's uh, another monkey, I believe he's called Chimpy over here. You give him an orange, and he's going to reward you with yet another uh, Jiggy. Yeah, we're getting a lot of Jiggies very quickly in this world, but that's only because it's the first and smallest world. Progress will be a lot slower in uh, the later worlds. Even the second one is a lot bigger. So now we got a lot of eggs here and a molehill. Gee, I wonder what I'm going to learn here. 
Yep, this is the molehill that uh, will allow you to uh, shoot eggs. There are two ways you can do so. You can shoot eggs forward by crouching and pressing C up, or you can fart eggs backwards, and they are and they're gonna bounce around by um, crouching and pressing C down instead. Which makes me realize I didn't explain how to do the talent trot. You crouch and press C left. Uh, it's as sim- it's as simple as that. Um, so yeah, it sounds painful. You're literally farting eggs out of your butt, and uh, we're gonna be using this move a few times as well, but most of the time we're, gonna, we're just going to shoot them forward. So, um, now I think Bottles is going to um, give me 50 eggs. Yep. So that will put me at 80. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, now you want to keep going in that general direction instead of going ahead to face Conga just yet, because not only is there a Mumbo token and some more eggs, but there is also a Witch Switch. There is one of these in each world, and when you press that switch, it makes a Jiggy appear in uh, Mumbo's ma- uh, not in Mumbo's Mountain, but in Gruntilda's lair. Sorry about that. So now you want to head back and uh, face off with Conga, as we were going to do. For that you just you're just going to stand on this tree stump here and spit an egg at Conga. He's going to throw an orange in retaliation and after that he's just going to start chilling and minding his own business you throw another egg he's gonna throw two oranges at you this time and let's go for another egg and after that he should be tired fighting and he's just going to hand over his uh, last jiggy so that's uh, three Jiggies that you can get just from doing stuff around the uh, conga. As I said, uh, a lot of item concentration since this is more or less the smallest world in the game. So now that this is done, we're gonna head over to the entrance area. Now that we have all three moves for this world, there are, there are a few notes on the bridge. Uh, by the way, you, you have to be careful to really check everywhere because as you can see, the draw distance for items such as notes isn't that good. So um, you may think, oh, there's nothing over there, but then you get closer and you see uh, that notes start to appear. Anyway, let's get down there and grab those notes. Another thing that I want to mention about notes is that just like with Jinjo's, uh, in the Xbox Live Arcade version, once you grab a note, you keep it permanently. Now, the problem wi- I have with that is that this slices into the difficulty of the game by a lot. Most of the challenge in this game resides in surviving long enough to get all 100 uh, notes in one go, which, eh, which, of course, since you keep them permanently in the Xbox Live Arcade version, makes things a little too easy, to be honest. Now, uh, I think I should have 94 notes once I'm done uh, grabbing everything that's uh, in this area. These are the notes. Oh wait, we got we got a jiggy just standing there in the middle of everything. It's it's gonna happen a lot less as we progress to, through the game. I can guarantee you that. So yeah, as I said, uh, 94 notes. I know where the last six are. Uh, I think we got some more time, so uh, this totem here, you want to uh, feed all parts of the totem with eggs. Now, let's do this. Timing is important because they go faster and faster. Now, before you throw an egg into that last one, you're going to want to get up there and grab this extra honeycomb piece. Now, let's... um, Okay. Wow, it went went straight through. Okay, there we go. Now we can get uh, yet another Jiggy for our troubles. Now, uh, we're going to need the Termite Transformation to get the last one. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find the the last uh, Mumbo Token, which is right in this place. So you're going to need the Talent Trot for this, which is why I didn't come here earlier on. So here we go. We got the last Mumbo Token, so now we can head back to uh, Mumbo's Skull and uh, actually get our Termite Transformation. It doesn't do a whole lot. It just allows allows you to get to, to the top of this area, among other things. But I think we are going to keep that for next time, okay?